Hello grade 12s, today's lesson is about meiosis and it follows the grade 12 life science cap syllabus. So meiosis is only 21 marks in paper 2 and all of these points I have included in the PowerPoint. So the introduction, a review of the structure of a chromosome. So chromosomes are formed when chromatin network unwinds at the beginning of cell, of cell division. And each chromosome is made up of a long strand of DNA, which is tightly wrapped around by an outer protein covering. So you can see this DNA molecule here in the chromosome, and it is tightly wrapped around by an outer protein covering. And we know that DNA is made up of nucleotides. A gene is a short sequence of nucleotides, which carries the genetic code for the development of a particular characteristic. And then you get portions of DNA strands that contain a sequence of nucleotides that are non-functional. So they do not code for anything and they are called non-coding DNA. If we look at this chromosome quickly, we can see a sister chromatid on this side and another one here, another sister chromatid, and they are joined by the centromere. And a chromosome like this appears to be like this because replication has taken place. So this is a replicated chromosome. But if replication has not taken place, then a chromosome looks like this. It is unreplicated. But you cannot refer to these chromosomes as unreplicated and replicated. You just refer to them as chromosomes. So then chromosomes in somatic and sex cells. Every somatic cell of an organism has a distinct number of chromosomes. So in humans, the distinct number of chromosomes is 46 chromosomes. And somatic cells are all of the cells in the body besides the gametes. Because the gametes are haploid, they occur in the sex organs when um, gametogenesis takes place, and they are a result of meiosis. So chromosomes are arranged in pairs. Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, so 46 chromosomes. And in these pairs, there are 22 different pairs of chromosomes, which are the autosomes. And then there are one, there's one pair of sex chromosomes, which we call the gonosomes. Um, the autosomes are numbered from 1 to 22, and each half, each pair, each half of each pair is identical to the other. One half is of maternal origin, and the other half is of paternal origin. So what makes chromosomes a homologous pair of chromosomes? So this one is of maternal origin, and this one is of paternal origin and what makes them homologous pairs of chromosomes is they are the same size they are the same shape and they code for the same characteristics so that is why they are referred to as identical to each other in females the sex chromosomes are xx and in males they are xy therefore a female has 44 chromosomes and then an xx chromosome which makes then female, and then males have 44 chromosomes, and X chromos a one X chromosome and y cro one Y chromosome, which makes them male. Then we get to diploid numbers and haploid numbers. Diploid numbers in humans is 46 chromosomes. So the diploid number is how many chromosomes there are in somatic cells. The haploid number is how many chromosomes there are in gametes in an organism. And the diploid number is double that of the haploid number. So D diploid double and H haploid half of the diploid number. So in humans, the diploid number is 46 and the haploid number is 23. Okay, so then we get to meiosis, the process. So meiosis is the type of cell division used to produce gametes. A cell undergoing meiosis will divide twice. The first division is in meiosis 1 and the second division is in meiosis 2. So here we have a cell. It first undergoes DNA replication. DNA must first replicate before meiosis 1 takes place where it splits into two cells. Then these two cells that were made during meiosis 1 don't undergo DNA replication now. They just straight go into dividing themselves. So this results in four cells, and these four cells have half the number of chromosomes as the parent cell, this original cell, and they are also genetically different to each other and genetically different to the parent cell. Meiosis occurs in gametogenesis, in plants it occurs in the anther and the ovary, and in humans meiosis occurs in the testes and the ovaries. 
Then the first meiotic division. The first meiotic division starts with interphase, so DNA replication takes place, which means the chromosomes, which were single threads, are now double threads. Each chromosome will now consist of two chromatids joined by a centromere. So it will look like these chromosomes. And then DNA replication helps to double the genetic material so that it can be shared by the new cells arising from cell division. In prophase 1, the chromosomes shorten and become visible as two, as two chromatids joined by a centromere. Homologous pairs of chromosomes are now visible, so here we can see homologous pairs of chromosomes. The nuclear membrane and nucleolus disappear, and the spindle starts to form. Chromatids from each homologous pair touch, and where they touch, it is called a chi uh, ch chiasma. So yeah, those two parts of the chromatid of these chromosomes will overlap, and that point where they touch is called a chiasma. And this is where DNA is crossed over. So this is called crossing over. There where they touch is called the chiasma. If there's more than one, it's a chiasmata. They are chiasmata. And then homologous pairs of chromosomes that are involved in crossing over are called bivalent. And what crossing over allows for is it allows for variation in offspring because it transfers genetic material from the maternal chromosome to the paternal chromosome and vice versa. So we can see some of the paternal, some of the paternal um, genetic information is now on the maternal chromosome and some of the maternal genetic information is now on the paternal chromosome. And this allows for genetic variation in the offspring. So then we see in mesophase 1, the spindle now extends across the whole of the cell and homologous chromosomes align at the equator. And the way that the, they align at the equator is random and this also allows for genetic variation. Okay, so then the centromeres of these chromosomes attach to the spindle fibers, these dotted lines here. And then in anaphase 1, these spindle fibers contract, they shorten and it pulls these chromosomes to the poles. And once they have reached the poles, the cytoplasm divides, and this is in telophase 1. So the cytoplasm divides, and that is called cytokinesis. So the cell membrane constricts and divides the cytoplasm in half to form two cells. So now the second meiotic division. Because of meiosis 1, we now have two cells. And each cell formed during meiosis 1 now divides again. Spindles form in each of these cells in prophase 2. In mesophase 2, the spindle fibers again spread across the whole of these cells. And the chromosomes now align singly at the equator. They are no longer in homologous pairs of chromosomes because in anaphase 1, they were pulled apart. So now there are only chromosomes in these cells, not homologous pairs of chromosomes. So these chromosomes align at the equator and they now, when the spindle fibers in anaphase 2 contract, are pulled apart as chromatids. So this chroma chromosome splits into chromatids. And then in telophase 2, four new cells are formed and each of these cells are haploid now. They have half the number of chromosomes as the original cell, as the parent cell, and they are also genetically different to each other and to the parent cell. So the daughter chromosomes or chromatids reach the poles and a new nucleus is formed. The cell membrane of each cell constricts and the cytoplasm divides in two, which is cytokinesis. Four haploid daughter cells are formed. Each daughter cell has half the number of chromosomes of the original cell and the daughter cells are genetically different from each other. Okay, then this is just a summary of each phase of meiosis and what happens in that phase, but also what happens specifically in meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 of those phases. I'm not going to go through this because we just did, but you can read it because it's a very nice summary. It also compares the differences between meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Then the importance of meiosis. Meiosis produces haploid gametes, and haploid gametes are important because when fertilization occurs, it's a it's a female gamete and a, haploid, and a male gamete that fuse together to form a zygote. And if 
these haploid gametes did not half, so they did not become haploid, then the chromosome number would double in the offspring. So if we had the normal chromosome number of humans in the gametes, so 46 chromosomes and 46 chromosomes, when they fused to form a zygote, the zygote would now have 92 chromosomes. That's why they first divide to have 23 chromosomes and 23 chromosomes. So when they fuse again together, it maintains a constant number of chromosomes from one generation to the next, because then these um, the offspring will have 46 chromosomes, and that is the correct number of chromosomes for humans. Then it also the importance of meiosis is also that it introduces genetic variation through two things, through the crossing over in prophase one, and then the random arrangement of chromosomes at the equator in metaphase one and metaphase two. Okay, then a comparison of mitosis and meiosis. The differences between mitosis and meiosis. So mitosis occurs to form somatic cells, whereas meiosis occurs to form gametes. Mitosis has one nuclear div division, whereas meiosis has two nuclear divisions. Mitosis um, makes two cells, which have the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell, and they are also genetically identical to the parent cell and to each other, whereas meiosis forms four cells that each have half the number of chromosomes as the parent cell. And these cells are not genetically identical to the parent cell, nor are they genetically identical to each other. Okay, so then no crossing over happens in mitosis, but there's crossing over in prophase one of meiosis. And then during anaphase of mitosis, the chromosome splits. In meiosis, the an in anaphase one, chromosomes don't split because it's homologous pairs of chromosomes and each chromosome of the homologous pair of chromosome is pulled into the new cells. But in anaphase two, the chromosomes do split into chromatids. And then similarities between mitosis and meiosis, DNA replication takes place, the nucleus divides, which is called karyokinesis, the cytoplasm divides, which is called cytokinesis, and new cells are formed. So those are the similarities between mitosis and meiosis. Then we get to abnormal meiosis. We get something called non-disjunction, and non-disjunction can result in aneuploidy or polyploidy. And non-disjunction is basically mistakes that occur during anaphase 1 or anaphase 2. So in anaphase 1, one or more homologous pairs of chromosomes may not separate, and in anaphase 2, sister chromatids of one or more chromosomes may not split. So as a result of non-disjunction, gametes forming from meiosis may have one extra chromosome, one less chromosome, no chromosomes, or an extra set of chromosomes. So if we look at this example here, we can see this is metaphase 2 and anaphase 2 because these are not homologous pairs of chromosomes. We can see they are pulled into their chromatids. So we can see here that there's non-disjunction here because this cell, once it divides in telophase, will now have two red chromatids. And it's not supposed to have two red chromatids. This set of um, red chromatids is supposed to be here on this side. So this will now have one extra um, chromosome, and this cell that forms on this side will now have one less chromosome. But now we get to the part where there's a cell with no chromosomes or a cell with an extra set of chromosomes. And that occurs if a division takes place here. So when anaphase happens, all of the blue chromatids, all of the green chromatids, all of the red chromatids go into one side. And the cell that once division has taken place, the cell that forms on this side has none of those because all of them have gone to this side. Um, so, if an, so it is possible that an abnormal gamete fuses with a normal gamete or another abnormal gamete. And if an abnormal gamete and another abnormal gamete that are opposite each other fuse, then it will result in a normal, um, a normal zygote, but that is very unlikely. Then non-disjunction, like we said, results in aneuploidy or polyploidy. So aneuploidy is when one gamete receives two copies of the same chromosomes while the other gamete receives no copy. So this is an example of aneuploidy because this cell, once telophase happens, 
this cell will have an extra chromosome and this cell will have no copy of, of the red chromosome. And if fertilization occurs with either of these gametes, fine normal gametes, the zygote will either be monosomic, have one less chromosome, or trisomic, have one more chromosome. So let's say um, this is the human cells, the human gametes, and we have a normal gamete with 23 chromosomes fusing with this gamete here. So because this one has an extra chromosome, it will not have 23, it will have 24. So the resulting zygote will have tw uh, will have one more chromosome, it will have 47 chromosomes, and that is trisomic. But if a normal gamete fuses with this cell that forms on this side, this cell, this gamete has one less red chromosome. So it will have not 23 chromosomes, but 22 chromosomes. So when a normal gamete with 23 chromosomes fuses with that gamete, it, the resulting zygote will have 45 chromosomes, and that is called monosomic. And then an example of aneuploidy is Down syndrome. This results because of an extra chromosome on the 21st um, number of chromosomes. So you can see they're numbered all the way up to 22, and then we have the X and Y. So this is a woman because there are two X chromosomes. And you can see that the 21st um, number of chromosomes has an extra chromosome on number 21, so it's called trisomy 21. And this can occur in meiosis 1, where the chromosome pair 21 doesn't separate, or can occur in meiosis 2, where chromatids of the chromosome 21 don't separate. And then some gametes will have an extra copy of chromosome 21. So if a gamete with an extra copy of chromosome 21 fuses with a normal ga gamete with one copy of chromosome 21, the resulting zygote will have three copies of chromosome 21, because if it has an extra copy of chromosome 21, it will then have two, um, two copies of chromosome 21. And if that's added with a chromosome that has only one copy of chromosome 21, as it should, then when it's, um, when it's fused together, the zygote has three copies of, 20, of chromosome 21, and therefore a total of 47 chromosomes. Then symptoms of Down syndrome is hearing loss, heart defects, decreased muscle tone, upward slanting eyes, small mouth and nose, depressed nasal bridge, and abnormal ear shape. And there's no cure for Down syndrome, but symptoms can be treated. So you can have heart surgery for the heart defects, or you can get hearing aids for the hearing loss. And then how Down syndrome is diagnosed is you can do a karyotype analysis or amniocentesis, and this can even be done while a woman is pregnant by extracting amniotic fluid and testing the um, testing for if there's trisomy 21. Then we get polyploidy and this is when um, a gamete that it results has more than two complete sets of chromosomes. So this will be an example of when polyploidy occurs. It will occur when the cell divides here and all of these chromosomes go into this cell. This means that this cell will have a whole extra set of chromosomes and this one will have no chromosomes. So polyploidy occurs when a gamete has more than two complete sets of chromosomes. Then a diploid gamete, so gamete shouldn't be diploid, gamete should be haploid, but if a diploid gamete, which is what occurs because of polyploidy, and a normal haploid gamete fused together, a triploid zygote will occur. And this is common in angiosperms, but rare in animals. And because of the whole extra set of chromosomes, the organisms become bigger. And this is used in agriculture deliberately because the size of fruits increase and that has a, um, a higher selling value. So we can see here that this is an example of a triploid gamete because it has, or a triploid zygote, because it has three chromosomes at each number and it should only have two. So that is an example of triploid. Okay, and then that is everything for meiosis.